tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy, live. Get ready to laugh with Sean Savoy, Leah Bonema, Eric Myers, Wally Collins, and your host, Tim Meadows. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Meadows. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming out tonight. Welcome to Gotham Comedy Live. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have fun tonight. We've got some really funny comics coming out tonight. You guys are going to have a great time. Yeah, calm down. <laughs> it's real. Yeah, it's me. I'm here. Yeah. Look at you guys. You look great. What a beautiful crowd, New York. You're so pretty. I like you guys a lot. What a diverse crowd. Really diverse. <laughs> got a lot of white people here. We got some black people, that's cool. I like it. I gotta start doing more stuff on BET because I'm missing out on the black people here. No, this is great. You guys are nice. Yeah. No, the show started. It actually did start. <laughs> No, I see you looking at me, <laughs> staring. I know what some of you guys are thinking, too. What the fuck is Don Cheadle doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get that a lot. I get that a lot, usually from white people. <laughs> white people see me, they're like, hey, Don Cheadle, hi. Loved Iron Man, too. It's great. You know, black people see me, they don't know who I am. They're like, hey, I don't know who you are. Why are these white people paying attention to you? Shit, I'm gonna rob this motherfucker. <laughs> no, it does, it happens a lot. White people think I'm Don Cheadle. One time I was on the airplane, the flight attendant came over to me. She goes, has anyone ever told you you look like Don Cheadle? I was like, yes, ma'am, it, it happens a lot. And she goes, are you Don Cheadle? <laughs> I was like, no, if I was Don Cheadle, I'd say it's me, Don Cheadle. It's nothing to be ashamed of, you know? So she asked me if she can get my autograph. She had no idea who I was. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll sign it for you. So I signed it. Don Cheeto thinks that you have really nice titties. So, there you go. I'm Don Cheeto. No, I'm Tim Meadows. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. It'll be really fun. Um, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, it's a shithole, but I know, yeah. It's a great town, though. No, I love it a lot. Detroit is actually a really cool city. I grew up in a rough part of Detroit. Maybe you heard of it, it's called Detroit. <laughs> you know that area there? No, there's some, uh, Detroit is like a cool, old, historic town. Did you guys know that? It was actually founded by the French fur traders. And Detroit is a French phrase, des trois, which is French for the twat sort of describes the city a little bit for you. <laughs> no, there are some nice areas in Detroit. There really are. There are some nice areas. And actually, if you ever, you know, get out of New York and go to Detroit for a visit, and you find yourself in a nice area, I got news for you. You're in Chicago. <laughs> no, it's cool. Like, the bad economy we've been going through has been good for Detroit. It really has. It's a bad economy. Because people can't afford to buy guns and bullets and shit. <laughs> So the death rate from guns has gone down dramatically in Detroit, which is great. Unfortunately, the bow and arrow death rate is skyrocketing because <laughs> we will kill you in Detroit. That's what we do very well there. Uh, what else I can tell you? I'm, uh, I'm the youngest of six. Youngest of six, used to get a lot of hand-me-downs when I was growing up. My favorite was the dashiki. <laughs> yeah, you guys know what that is? A few of you do, yeah. No, dashiki is like this African shirt it's really cool. It's like this long, flowing African shirt. I thought it was really cool until I found out dashiki was Swahili for shitty shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. Uh, that was a hand-me-down from my brother James. My oldest brother James is the angriest black man you'll ever want to meet in your life. 
That's how we described it. When I was kids, it was really fun for us because we never, we didn't know what was going to piss them off. So it was really fun just to find out, you know, because you never knew what it was going to be. You'd be like, uh, hey, James, you want a sandwich? Fuck that sandwich. <laughs> sandwich can kiss my ass. Fucking sandwich think it's better than me? Sitting there on the plate with the bread all toasted. Mustard and mayonnaise on both sides of the bread. Turkey all freshly sliced and shit. Yeah, I'll have a sandwich. Thank you, man. <laughs> so angry. Um, what else? I'm divorced, too. Something else you should know about me. You're applauding that? Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you lost half of everything. Congratulations, Tim. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, it sucks being divorced. It really does. I really hate it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> I was like, really depressed, you know, after I got divorced. And I was like, all right, I got to get myself together. So I did. I um, got sober. I was like sober for like two years. I quit like drinking alcohol, quit smoking weed. And that was hard because I love weed. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Because one thing you should know about me tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is that I love weed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, I do. I love everything about it. I love the smell of it. I love the taste of it. I don't care. I'd eat it raw right at the ground. <laughs> I don't give a shit. You take me to a weed farm, you'd be like, where's Meadows? Oh, he's over there eating weed right at the ground. <laughs> no, I love weed. I do. I love it. I love weed. <laughs> no, man. I couldn't bring any with me either because I had to fly here. So I don't have any weed. And I love weed. <laughs> No, no, just because I'm telling you guys how much I love weed doesn't mean I want you to come up to me after the show. <laughs> Give me some of that sweet New York weed. I'll be right by that sign over there. Yeah. Put it in the weed pocket right here. <laughs> no, I guess what I'm saying is I'll suck your dick for a joint, all right? <laughs> uh, I'm not gay, I just love weed. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> Oh, man. What else? I'm, uh, like I said, I am divorced. I got myself together. It was really cool. And I actually met a young lady. It was really great. Took her out on a date. I'm sorry, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was good. I took her out on a date. It was really fun. I did everything right, you know. On the third date, I got her back to my apartment, made love to her. I gave it to her hard. <laughs> and super quick, too. <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> and we, we were laying there afterwards, you know, me laying there in our love juices and stuff. And <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, we're adults. You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, we were laying in our love soup. How about that? <laughs> all right, fancy New Yorkers. We were laying there in our love booyah base, all right? <laughs> No, we were laying there, we were talking afterwards, and I told her, I said, like, listen, baby, is there anything you want to do with a man? I'll do it. I don't care. I haven't been with a woman in a long time. I want to get freaky. <laughs> I go, is there anything you want to try? She goes, you know, I always thought it would be fun to put on a strap on and fuck a guy in his ass. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, baby, so what else you got? Because <laughs> that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, like I said, I'm divorced, and like, my kids are, um, my ex-wife is white. She's like you guys. <laughs> she is, she's white. My boys are both biracial. They're mixed. And their hair is like yours, a big problem for me. I don't know how to groom their hair. Because I, I don't know how to groom white people's hair. I really don't. So when I got my kids, I just wet their hair and then comb it backwards, you know? <laughs> yeah, my kids are like two little Puerto Rican pimps. <laughs> I have no idea. Get on out there and sell that meth, boys. It's gonna be great. Um, we're gonna have a really good time tonight, everybody. Yeah. We got some really funny comics coming. So uh, just stick around and we'll be right back. It's gonna be a really good time. So hang on, all right? Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Sean Savoy is taking the stage when we return.
Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right, thank you so much. That was really nice of you guys. Um, the next uh, comic taking the stage is a very, very uh, funny young man. This is his television debut, all right? So this is a big deal. Please welcome very funny S Sean Savoy, everybody. <laughs> What's up, Gotham? Everybody feeling all right? Yeah. All right. Everybody drinking up, get messed up. We're live. Let's do it. Yeah. Isn't it hilarious that no matter how drunk somebody is, like if they fall down, they'll never spill their drink? They'll be like, hey, man, oh, chill, oh, chill. Oh. <laughs> Are you all right? Well, my arm's broke, but well, my drink's okay. <laughs> I'm not paying another nine dollars. Hell that. <laughs> I'm just getting in town. Uh, on my flight coming over here, we had uh, two male stewardesses, or stewards, if you will, <laughs> flight attendants, whatever the fuck, and I don't know if I was the one watching this shit, but this shit was hilarious to me. Like, one of the dudes was like, obviously gay, and the other dude was straight, and he trying to let everyone know in his own little way that he wasn't gay like the other dude. <laughs> and they had like a little like face-to-face -face showdown, for, like the little seatbelt demonstration bullshit. The gay guy was like, all right, you guys, you ready? Let's do it right. Grab those seatbelts, put them on nice and tight and snug. Make them snug, who cares? Make them snug. <laughs> Grab your mask, get some fresh air. It's like fresh air in there. Feel that shit, feel that shit. We have eggs over here, eggs over here. We're gonna fly really high, let's do it, fuck yeah. <laughs> and the other dude, he was on the other side. He's like, all right, put your seatbelts on like this in a non-gay way. <laughs> Put your mask down in a non-gay way. During the flight, you will not find me in the cockpit, <laughs> nor will you find me in the rear. <laughs> I'm gonna keep my ass in the middle. <laughs> Before we came to the show tonight, we were watching that movie, uh, Paranormal Activity. You also want to be Paranormal Activity? Yeah. They got uh, Paranormal Activity, they got celebrity ghost stories. I'm sure you guys have heard ghost stories your whole life growing up. Now uh, this whole entire room, has anyone even heard of one reported case where the paranormal is messing with the black family? <laughs> Some reason they want to mess with us, you know? We want to be scared too, this is bullshit. <laughs> they also don't mess with the Chinese either because the Chinese would find a way to cook that ghost. Hold on, we cook ghosts for you, we got a shrimp fried ghost here. <laughs> yummy, yummy ghost, very good. We have free sample, yummy, yummy ghost, very good. Yummy, yummy, very good. You try yummy, yummy. We cook it right here in the walk. <laughs> very scary and yummy. Scary and yummy. Woo! Woo! No, woo, he my son. Come over here, woo, help me stir here. We have yummy ghosts right here. You put right here, yummy inside in your belly, right here. <laughs> Everyone's talking about, uh, <laughs> Everyone's talking about weed though before, uh, weed smokers do beware. There is some bullshit amongst us. I found out about this shit the hard way, but they do have a test now. Touch you've been smoking weed while you've been driving. I didn't know about this shit. I knew about the breathalyzer test, been drinking and driving. They got a test now, just smoking weed. I don't know, I was like, hi, shit, I was driving on the highway. I didn't have any weed in the car. The car didn't smell like weeds. So I thought I was straight. <laughs> Next thing you know, I see this cop, my rearview mirror, I'm all scared. I pull over to the side. The cop walks up to the car and he was like, excuse me, is there any reason why you're doing 15 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone? I said I wasn't in a rush. He said, all right, Kanye West, out of the car, please. He made me do the drunk test, you know, but I wasn't drunk, I was just high. I was just laughing through all that. I was walking the line, touching my nose, and I back, there he is. He started getting mad because I was passing everything. I was like, you sure you haven't been doing anything tonight? No wacky tobacco, no marahuji, nothing like that? I was like, no, I've been doing anything. He said, all right, hold on one second. And he went to a squad car, and he came back with a cupcake. <laughs> he took the cupcake, he put on the hood of the car. He said, would you eat this cupcake even though it's been sitting in the back of my squad car for the last two weeks unwrapped? I said, is that chocolate frosting on there? Is he had the right to mean sound anything you say, Kim? So I had to post that immediately on, immediately on Facebook. Everybody's doing Facebook now. Like Facebook's like taking over. Like you almost don't even need like human contact anymore because you already know what everybody's doing. Like you don't even need to see them. Like I got an invite for a high school reunion 
And like before, the thought of a high school reunion was all magical. Like, I don't know if they're fat now, if they have kids, I don't know what they're doing. But now you already know all that shit. You don't even need to go. Like, have you talked to Brian lately? Nah, but I know he had some serious food porn this morning. <laughs> he had some eggs, some waffles, strawberries. He took some really good pictures. And then like around 11 o'clock, he checked into the gym. He's doing like a new workout, trying to get his six pack ready for the summertime. He did some before and after pictures. It was pretty cool. And then like seven o'clock, him and his boys are doing trivia night. It's like their ninth week winning in a row. They went tonight, they're gonna take home the crown and take pictures and everything. Damn, when was the last time you talked to him? Oh, like 10 years ago. All right. <laughs> But I know him and I know his life. I tried to do the online dating bullshit. We got any online daters? Uh, wor <laughs> it worked for one person. I tried to do the Christian mingle joint. I tried to mingle. I want y'all to tell me this is me being an asshole or a dick or being like too picky or judgmental, or whatever. But I met this girl online. Our profiles matched up perfectly. She came to come pick me up for the date. <laughs> My car was in the shop. She looked just like our profile pic. I was like, yes, I'm not being catfished. We went to the club, we were dancing the same tunes. She was buying the shots. It's like, oh, this shit's fucking working out. I like this shit, I like this shit, this is working out. And she's like, hey, tomorrow you wanna do a picnic? Cause I'll do a picnic with you, let's do the picnic. I don't care, let's do the picnic. She came the next day for the picnic. It was just like the movie. She had the little like wicker basket, the little plaid blanket. We were like rolling around the grass, like toasting wine. And we were like just about to go in for the kiss. And like out of nowhere, like a butterfly comes and starts like flying by. It was gorgeous. <laughs> and then she's like, <laughs> She fucking killed that shit. <laughs> Who in the fuck kills a butterfly? Seriously. <laughs> Rapists don't kill butterflies. Serial killers don't kill butterflies. I was like, you're taking me back to my mom's house right now, man. Fuck all this shit. We're going right back to my mom's house. You take me back to my mom's house right now. I'm playing with you. <laughs> Everyone's trying to be liberal now. Like you heard like Disney's gonna have a new movie with a plus size princess. You guys ready for that? You can call it the princess and the biscuit. <laughs> It'll be like her sisters, they're all like, they're all mad because she's pretty, but she's fat. They're like, why don't you just get out of here? You're just a fat princess. There's never gonna be a prince for you. You're just fat, you just eat all our food. Why don't you just get out of here? We don't like you, go. She goes to her room, she's all sad. All the snacks in her room like talk to her and shit. You could have like Tracy Morgan playing the Twinkie. Don't worry about that shit, princess. There's gonna be some prince out there that's gonna get you pregnant. You want a biscuit, you get yourself a biscuit. You know what, Mr. Twinkie, you're right. I wanna go to the place where the pudding is. The place where all the Twinkies and snacks come true. I'm hungry, I'm starved. I just want it all, why can't there be? more gravy for me. All I want is a biscuit. All I want is some snacks. I don't care if I'm bigger. The prince in the next town is black. <laughs> and you know if they're gonna have the fat princess, they're also gonna have the gay prince too. It could be like Disney's the princess prince. It'll be like his big king dad is all mad that his son is gay. He has a big ass beard. He's like, no son of mine is ever gonna be with a man. Who do you think you are walking around the kingdom in your mother's clothes? Dad, I could be a king like you and make you proud, but I'd make one hell of a queen. No son of mine will ever, ever be with a man. <laughs> but I'm just, uh, I'm just getting, I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm just happy to be back in town. Like I got a lot of friends to stay out here. Like as soon as we got into town, they took us to one of those little Japanese sabachi grill where they like cook the food in front of you. And uh, that is no place to go too high. <laughs> We went there, the dude immediately knew we were high. We went there and the guy was like, hi. I was like, yes. He started doing a little demonstration bullshit. He was like chopping vegetables in the air, fucking throwing the salt shaker on his head, middle like volcano out of onion, little log cabin out of celery. He was like doing this bitch's nails and shit. And like, <laughs> that shit was tight as shit, but I was high as shit. So like my face couldn't really give him like the true props that he deserved. Like in my mind, I was like, oh shit, y'all see this guy? Whoa, child of vegetable hair, looking salt shaker on his head. This guy's awesome. He's done my booty. Whoa, this guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. But to him, I was just like, <laughs> vegetables? <laughs> At the end of the meal, they take like a little spatula, try to like throw some food in your mouth. You're supposed to catch it. It's supposed to be like a great time. We didn't catch shit in our mouth. It's basically like piece of meat after piece of meat is hitting us in the face. He's like, all right, you big black boy, we got chicken for you. Here we go, chicken. Dance. And that's like hot meat coming like right off the grill. It's like shit. 
My boys were like, food fight, get that dude! My one boy took like a whole handful of rice and just like chucked it at the dude. He caught every single piece in his mouth. He's like, ay, 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 ay. My munchies started kicking in. All my food was getting wasted. I had to watch the last piece come in slow motion like the Matrix. He's like, you ready? Here come a butterfly shrimp. Hujahita, hucha, how you can? Out of nowhere, keep my girl. Ah! I all thank you very much, man, Sean Savoy. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Leah Bonima is taking the stage when we return. everybody thank you so much you're very very nice your applause is so so sincere I thank you so much for that hey our next performer has performed for the troops in Iraq yeah she's very funny very talented please welcome Leah Bonima Yes! Yes! Oh! Thank you. Okay, okay. Ah! Oh. oh! You guys are making me feel great. I mean, thank you. I've been feeling really good lately. I've been trying to watch more porn. Yeah, yeah. But not for sexual reasons. Just to learn how to fake enthusiasm. Right? Those girls are working. Has anyone ever been that excited at their job? <laughs> I think it's so motivational. <laughs> Anytime I have to do something that I don't want to do, I just open my laptop, put on a little red tube. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll be like, that girl just took on five guys. I'm pretty sure I can take on cleaning my toilet right now. <laughs> but then you're gonna be like, clean it! Yeah, you scrub it! Scrub it! <laughs> <laughs> Dirty talking makes me giggle, like I totally can't do it. I wish I could, but I'm like, no, I have parents that love me. <laughs> right? I have an actual daddy, and he's still alive. I hate Fifty Shades of Grey. I haven't read it. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to judge it. Right? I'm an American. I don't need facts to have opinions about things. <laughs> We're so proud. We're like, yeah, we don't need facts. We're like, Captain Kirk. We're going with our gut. But I have friends that are obsessed with it, like friends that love it. One friend, every time I see her, she's like, have you read Fifty Shades yet? Have you read Fifty Shades? So finally I said, sell it to me. Like, what's so great about it? Her words, she said it's a modern romance for women. I said, well, what makes it a modern romance? And she immediately responded, well, there's this rich guy. <laughs> Which, that's not even a romance. That's her having a fantasy about not getting a job. <laughs> <laughs> we vote now. You have to keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> and also, that's not even modern. That's like Cinderella with a ball gag. <laughs> She said, no, it's really about the protagonist, which is a strong word for not literature, but I'll give it to her. <laughs> and apparently our protagonist is a virgin, which I'm cool with, be a virgin. Uh, but she's a virgin in the United States in her 20s. <laughs> okay, so already our premise is suspicious. <laughs> You're like, I think they're extinct. So the, our virgin meets this rich guy, and then right away they have sex. And then the first time this girl has sex in her entire life with a man that she barely knows, she has an orgasm. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, it's a science fiction novel. <laughs> Thank you. Right? 
Why, if your market demographic is women, are you gonna start off with something that's never happened to a woman in the history of first time sex experiences? Like, why can't we have an honest losing your virginity dialogue? Call it 50 shades of a panic attack. Right, and then just write an entire chapter dedicated to the thoughts that go through a woman's mind the first time you have sex. Because I don't feel like people prepare us. I would have loved to have read that chapter. And I think it should start with a girl being like, oh my God, what is that noise right now? It sounds like, uh, like we're walking through a mud puddle. Is that... Oh. It's like slapping. It's like fat slapping. I don't wanna listen to my fat slap. Why does it feel like my organs are being moved? Are my organs being moved right now? I think his dick is in my kidney. Is it possible that his dick is in my kidney? I don't think I can ask that. I feel like that's rude. I'll just Google it. I'm gonna Google that later. What would I Google? Would I Google dick kidney or there's a kidney in my dick? I'm not sure. Oh my God, is there a fart button in there? Cause it feels like he's pushing on a fart button. Am I gonna fart during this? I would be so mortified if I, you know what? If I have to fart, I'm just gonna cough. I will cough through this whole thing if I have to fart. That is my plan on that one. Oh my God, is it a pee feeling? Because I don't know if people pee during, <gasps> could he pee? Could he pee? because I think that's the same hole. Isn't it the same hole? Was I supposed to ask first? Is that a thing people, like a road trip where you're like, make sure you pee before you get in. <laughs> oh, I just looked down and I cannot believe I shaved my pubic hair into the shape of a lightning bolt. I can't believe I did. I thought he likes Harry Potter. It's magical. It's not, it's bumpy. It's, oh my God, I'm really gonna fart. It's totally gonna happen. I'll just clench it. I'm gonna clench. Why am I thinking about my mom right now? Oh God, I'm sucking in, I'll smile at him. I'm smiling. I hate eye contact. I'll just look, you know what? This is my better angle. I'm gonna look this way. I think, why did, did he just stop? Is it, oh, 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 it's over. <laughs> oh, it's so great. I love sex. It's That would be so horrible if you were like, just you. No, that was, the rest of us knocked it out the first time. It's awesome. I'm sure it's equally as anxiety producing for men the first time. I don't know what guys think, but I'm sure there's a lot of pressure, right? Like if I had to guess, I would guess you're thinking like, I can't believe she's letting me do this. I can't believe she's letting me do this. This one's like, yes, you were like, no. I feel like you're thinking like, I hope she doesn't wake up. I hope she doesn't wake up. <laughs> one, day, one dude, three ladies, am we close? I don't wanna share it, all right. Maybe. Did you say it's a party? Is that how you responded to that? Sweet Jesus. I also feel like these books, they completely negate anything wonderful about like real relationships. Like often when people fall in love with each other, they fall in love with like the weird things about the other person, like the little idiosyncrasies. Like how many women have moved in with a dude and realized that after they come out of the bathroom, they have like a, like a little wet spot <laughs> on, their, on their boxer briefs, you know, or whatever kind of man panties they wear. Like they're it's just, you, you see, like you're, that's, you're really hitting home with that one. <laughs> But you just made eyes at this guy with a blue shirt, ha! Huh. Peace spot, dude. But it's like, I guess what it is is that you, you pee a little bit after you pee. Is that what's that? Like it's, some of it's on central time or a little bit different density. Right, so it's just like, it makes a little cute little, and I get it, like you're in public restrooms, there are people right next to you, you obviously can't just shake it around, you get your neighbor. 
You can't shake it up and down. Oh, you get your chin, that would be horrible. I don't understand why you can't walk it over to the hand dryer. That seems acceptable. <laughs> that seems, I was actually sitting on a subway once and this man, he had a business suit on, like khaki, nice khaki pants, and he had a peace spot that went all the way through. And I couldn't not stare. It was like the peace spot was the Death Star. My eyes were the Millennium Falcon just getting sucked right in. And I didn't mean to. And he actually looked at me and said, uh, I was washing my hands. I was like, oh, oh, you were washing your hands in a circle around your dick? Thank you so much. I'm Leah Bonham. Have a great night. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Eric Myers is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. All right, everybody. This has been really fun. Uh, we have another great comic uh, to perform for you. He is a, a two-hour special on Hulu. It's called Dopeless Romantic. Yeah, isn't that sweet? Uh, please welcome Eric Myers, everybody. Let's do it! <laughs> What's up? I'm Bradley Cooper on crack. Oh, 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 shit! I'm just kidding. My name's Eric. I'm a recovering addict, alcoholic. I have 40 days sober today. Don't clap, it's court ordered. I went to this religious rehab because it was free, and my first AA meeting was like a Christian AA meeting, and I swear to God, at the end of the meeting, this man came out and started pouring all the alcoholics glasses of wine. And I turned to my sponsor, Steve, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on? He's like, Eric, it's cool. Once he blesses the wine, we're allowed to drink it because it has transformed into the blood of Jesus. I'm like, no, shit. <laughs> Can he bless this bag of cocaine? <laughs> no, no, officer. This is the dandruff of the Lord. <laughs> My roommate in rehab, this guy Adam, seriously, he was there specifically for ambient. That's a sleeping pill. That's the only shit he did. How do you party on sleeping pills? To the point your life is spiraling out of control. What do you even do for fun? You go to a club on a Saturday, you're on the dance floor. Yeah, yo! Yeah, yo! Give me an ambient player! Oh, shit! Here I go! Here I go! Hey guys, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I got my jammies on. I got my jammies on. What is your rock bottom? I am so well rested. I am tired of being refreshed. What are your triggers? Eric's coming over. Don't mention pajamas or naps. Is that a Snuggie? I'll kill you. I'm glad I quit drinking in 40 days. I have saved literally millions of dollars. Cause I'm too broke to go out and get drunk and look cool, you know? I can't afford like name brand, top shelf alcohol. I have to get like the piece of shit, generic knockoff. I go to the bar, I'm like, how much is the sex on the beach? They're like, eight dollars. I have two dollars, I'm like, give me the hand job by the creek. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't need a cup. Just <laughs> pour it in my shoe. I slurp out the shoe. Because I got a DUI. That's why I had to get sober. I was driving home from a bar, and I had an open beer in my lap. And if you get pulled over with an open beer, give up. The cop sees me, I am shit-faced. He sees the beer, he's like, sir, sir, have you been drinking tonight? <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, whose beer is that? My friend is drinking it. <laughs> Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. <laughs> I'd like to report a missing person. <laughs> and when I drank, I did a lot of drunk Facebooking, which is some embarrassing shit. Like, I'm 34, okay? Back in the day, drunk dialing was embarrassing, but you make an ass of yourself in front of one ex. With drunk Facebooking, you make an ass of yourself in front of up to like 5,000 people. You ever wake up hungover on a Monday morning and realize you sent a dick pic to everybody you know? <laughs> Eric changed his cover photo. <laughs> Nobody likes this. <laughs> Delete! <laughs> Talking to my dad today. You ever talk to your parents and they just make you feel like the biggest pussy? Like, everything my dad did growing up was the most hardcore, manly shit on the planet. You know, like, Eric, when I was a kid, I had to walk 10 miles to school in the freezing ass snow. And he was raised in the 50s, and I guess that's how shit was. Like, I came up in the early 90s. Things weren't that bad. I'm glad I don't have a kid, because if I bitched about my childhood, I just have to make it, like, uber dramatic to sell it. We didn't have cell phones in 1992, you ungrateful little shit. I had a house phone. If it rang, I had to walk 10 feet into the fucking kitchen. Across cold tiles. I didn't have caller ID. Whoever answered, I had to talk to those motherfuckers. I didn't have an iPod, I had a Walkman with a cassette. You wanna hear a certain song, you had to fast forward to the whole fucking album. Yeah, then the tape got stuck, you had to take it out and twist, twist, twist. I didn't have iTunes and Lyric Finder. If I didn't know the name of a song, I had to go to Sam Goody at the mall and sing that shit to the cashier. Oh, that's right. We didn't have movies on demand. I had to rent movies from Blockbuster. <laughs> Shit was three days late, it was $875. <laughs> I didn't have PlayStation with 12 buttons. I had Nintendo, two buttons. <laughs> A and B. <laughs> One was jump, the other was jump again, that's it. <laughs> I'm just jumping over shit for 10 fucking years. Did I jump or do I jump again? Luigi, you piece of shit. We didn't have internet porn. We didn't have laptops in the hotel. Remember ordering porn off a hotel TV? I knew the front desk could see it, and I didn't give a shit. Because I was so horny, the opening credits got me all riled up. The credits came on. The following movie contains nudity. Yeah! This is a treat! <laughs> Adult situations! Oh! I'm an adult! <laughs> and I wanna see some situations! <laughs> Strong sexual content! Show the fucking movie! Show the fucking movie! You've been charged, 1895. Stop the fucking movie! Hey, I'm Eric Myers. Thank you very much.
stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Wally Collins is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you guys. You're a great crowd. You're a great crowd. Um, all right, we have another really great comedian. Uh, I've known him for a while. Um, he's back again because he did so great the first time we had to have him back again. Ladies and gentlemen, Wally Collins. <laughs> Hey, clap for Tim Meadows, everybody. Tim Meadows, I shook his hand. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Wow. All right, so we can get into this. Uh, we can tell you, I'm a married man. Here's the proof of purchase right there. Uh, married people, married people, married people, with married people. All right, here's the fun part. Single people represent. We're the single people. <laughs> it never fails. The single people are always happier than the married people, man. <laughs> Who's married? Uh, <laughs> Who's single? <laughs> I can fly. <laughs> but here's the crazy thing, man. Before I got married, you know, I was excited. I got engaged. I would announce I'm getting, you know, I'm getting married. Okay? I said, everybody, I got engaged. I am getting married. Never fail. Always the ugliest doing the audience jump and go, hey, don't do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess up your life. <laughs> You see me, I choose to be single. <laughs> Hold on, my hump itches. <laughs> my wife is from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> you guys went, woo. <laughs> yeah, she's Latin, she's very, very shy, but if you mistake her for Puerto Rican, she'll stab you. So, <laughs> don't, don't do that, because it hurts, seven stitches. Well, she's Dominican, she's very Dominican. She's batting 337. <laughs> That's a baseball joke, I, I can tell that. <laughs> she was like, ah, what? I understand what he's talking about. <laughs> Meeting my wife's family is kind of interesting. Meeting for the first time, walking to the house. The first thing I noticed with the family is that they're very, very religious because all through the house, they have a lot of Jesuses, uh, Jesus. <laughs> More than one, I'm just, <laughs> in fact, that's what I said. I said, hey, look at all the G's I. <laughs> hey, that one lights up, look at that one. <laughs> that's a bobblehead, look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wait till everybody left the room. I asked the bobblehead Jesus a question. I said, hey, Jesus, am I going to the lottery? I smack his chin, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So we went to Spain for a honeymoon. That, that was my wife said it. She goes, you know what? I want to go someplace exotic, someplace romantic, where I can speak my first language. I jumped up and said, Puerto Rico. And she stabbed me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> it was a slash. But um, Spain is nice, every chance to go, man, it's beautiful. Only problem I had in Spain was in the restaurants trying to order the food. Now my wife no, had no problem because that's her, her language, her and the way to go, go along just fine, like a song, like la 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 and thank God there are pictures on the menu because I'm trying to order my food. Now I sound like a goofy caveman. I'm like, me, me, eat, eat. <laughs> With cheese. <laughs> so I got frustrated. Before I leave Spain, I'm going to learn something. I'm very proud of myself. I learned the phrase, K-S-S-O. K-S-S-O means what is... <laughs> I impressed her. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> 
KSSO means what is that, right? So I'm going through Spain. KSSO, what is that? KSSO, what is that? KSSO, what is that? KSSO, what is that? And uh, there are no black folks in Spain, none. I checked. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you how I was convinced. I was walking down the street, little kids are going, KSSO. So my wife and I, we don't have kids, we have a dog, though we have a seven pound Yorkie, about that big. Yeah, his name is Burger. And uh, that's really his name, Burger. When he does something like we go, ah, good Burger. <laughs> and, and yo, he's got an underbite, I'm not lying, he's got an underbite, like this. <laughs> it kinda looks like he's smiling, ah, cheeseburger. <laughs> but uh, that dog, man, we, we, we got him from a, a breeder, we didn't adopt him, people gave us flack about that. They said, why, how come, you know, why, why didn't you adopt the dog? The reason why I adopt the dog because I want to bring something home and then find out issues about it and it's too late. You know what I mean? Come home one day, he's lighting our couch on fire. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, don't do that. He's like, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my real owner. You know? <laughs> now we go with a counseling, man. I ain't gonna deal with that. Man. <laughs> so here's the thing. See, my wife, she was attacked by a dog when she was very young. So she's afraid of dogs, you know what I mean? But I wanted a dog. I wanted a German Shepherd. Right? Because I think German Shepherds are really regal. I said, I want a German Shepherd. She said, if we get a dog, we want something small like a Yorkie. So I wanted a German Shepherd. She wanted a Yorkie. So we compromised and got a Yorkie. <laughs> That's right. I said, I'm married, right? Yeah. <laughs> but see, they're best friends because see, she got attacked by a dog in Burger. He got attacked by a dog when he was younger, too. So now he's afraid of dogs, too. So they're both afraid of dogs. <laughs> So when they come back home from a walk, they're both like, I was afraid of that dog. You were afraid? I was afraid. I was so scared. I was so scared. I'm like, and they hug each other. And it's a beautiful thing. You know? <laughs> so uh, I took him for a, a car ride, and he threw up in the car. He got sick in the car, right? And I'm like, oh, man. So I called the vet. He got car sick. I said, what do I do? She told me to give him Dramamine. It's that motion sickness pill, right? So I gave him the pill. And I should have read the bottle before I gave him the pill, because the pill said one, <laughs> one pill, the bottle said one pill is for a 150-pound person. Yeah, burger seven pounds, man. <laughs> he was messed up, man. <laughs> His eyes were a half mass. He was nodding in and out. <laughs> he had the underbite. <laughs> Looked like a straight meth head. Like. <laughs> He's trying to bark. Meow. <laughs> so then, oh man, I can tell you the story. So he reached puberty and that was new to my wife. She never experienced something like this. This is a true story. She called me on the phone. I was doing the show. I'm not lying. She called me. She goes, yeah, I was rubbing his belly and his lipstick popped out. <laughs> I'm like, his lipstick? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now he's like humping everything, man. He <laughs> Walks over to a chair like, how you doing? You okay, girl? Yeah. I'm like, no, no, you know, we're, we're doing the neuter thing. So I got him neutered, and people gave me flack about that. They said, why'd you do that? You took away his malehood. The reason why I did that, because I don't want any puppy mama drama in my house. You know what I'm saying? Some random poodle would knock on our door. It's Burger in there! Come on, come on, Burger, these your puppies! Look at the little one, looks like you, Burger! Burger, I know you're in there! He's looking through the window, is that Buffy? Oh man. <laughs> she told me she was fixed. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, man, so we don't have any kids. We have a, a friend, Tasha, she's gonna have a baby. She's in her seventh month. Okay, check this out. She gained 70 pounds. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> she came to our house, she came around the corner. I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> To myself, what she heard was, hey, Tasha, how you doing? <laughs> because I'm not stupid. <laughs> but Tasha's got attitude. Tasha's like, I'm not worried about it. See, as soon as I have this baby, <laughs> as soon as this baby is born, <laughs> I'm going to lose the weight. <laughs> I'm like, so what are you saying? You're going to have a 70-pound baby? You can be in a hospital. Hey, doc, what is it? Congratulations. You have a third grader. <laughs> Here's the book bag. It's got homework. <laughs> but I know, man, raising kids, you know, this is a job. Any mother, we're the mothers. Moms, we're the moms. Clap your hands. Moms, yeah. See, I understand. It's, okay, I see you. <laughs> Very frustrated lady right there. 
Because you all do. Mothers, man, they just, you know, they just lose their mind. When they get angry, they just lose their mind. You know what I mean? It's like, see, especially I still look at my mother mad in church. Just watching Lose Her Mind in church is showtime for us. You know what I mean? How many of y'all been to a black church? Doubt it. But black church services <laughs> last good three or four or five days. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and me and my sisters are in the pew like, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. Stop touching me. I'm not touching you. <laughs> My mother's trying to, <laughs> trying to yell at us through her teeth during the sermon, right? Like, Done. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Ready? Thank you, everybody, for coming. Let's have a round of applause for Sean Savoy, Leah Bonema. Eric Myers and Wally Collins, everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Have a good night. We'll see you.